Yo, yo. What's up? Welcome back. I'm keeping the streak alive here, doing another live stream. Hope everything works. So let's see. Can you see? Let's open Ableton Live as well. But I've got kind of a synth starting point. It's very atmospheric. You can see this in a soundtrack. All right, so this is loading up my default set, which I should really clean up and just make it be um, make it be this with a limiter on there. Does it have a, what is this? Oh, upper middle. Okay. Um, bring that down. audio in maybe and I don't think it should be too hard to make this the default save current set as default boom so now um, I'm not going to save it because it should have saved that as my default. So now when I go to open it, I'll have it kind of with the settings that I want. There it is. The only other thing is I'd add that. I want that on. Or do I? When I go to record, I think that doubles. It. Yeah. So yeah, we want that off. Okay, back into this sound. So what I might do is come over here and just, let's grab oscillator one. It's on a saw. Maybe I'll make this into a sign. And we'll and then let's see what this is. This is a maybe I'll change that to a I'm just kind of experimenting. I went up an octave there. So I'm just trying to get something very atmospheric. just at 120 so yeah so 
So I'm just kind of messing with the some of the pitch settings now. And what I also might do is put the some of the SP delay on there. All right, and I think we got a pretty cool bass sound here, so I'm just gonna put in some chords. Uh, I've been kind of playing in this key where I just use a B natural and then all black keys. I don't even know what key it is, but it's very dark and sounds really good for stuff like this. So. sure if that's going to be perfect but we'll do our best here make it in here on the SP um, that we can start to just kind of mess around with duplicate this delete we'll call this pad dark and this can be drums one something along those lines and I've got my SP feeding into my audio interface here and so yeah um, <clears throat> I'm gonna want to count in It's there, so here we go. back in here make sure it knows the one one is there actually even we'll start it right there I don't know why it's starting all the way over there um, there we go go in here make sure pretty close but I think I'm gonna want to move it like right to there and everything else should be fairly on close to on move, move some stuff here and there but shouldn't be that far off <laughs> And I'll probably use my same trick I've been doing to kind of I'll just filter these some I think like techier titter tattering hats 
um, and maybe do some cool stuff again with like beat repeat so we'll get some variations here and there so we'll load up a drum rack here <laughs> got our drum rack going and I guess I don't know do I have like pots and pans on here or like pops hmm Sorry. Um. Uh, I'm trying to think of I don't know, tin. That actually could really work. So something like this, what I would want to do, even though this is like a really harsh sound, I'm going to want to fade it way out and actually just really shorten. So now, and now I can pitch it like up even higher. Maybe not that high, but you get the idea. You kind of feel out where that... And so now what I can do with this is kind of similar to what I did the other day where I'll dial in a lot of these and then this you can pull up so you can get kind of more dynamic with it. I think there used to be even a way to um, like I forget how but you can like make it so it can draw waves for you. But basically what we'll want is to start kind of low come up here to the middle max out and then come back down so that it's kind of got this perfect loop feel and then we can start to mess with the groove over here too which will so if we go in here and the mpc has quite a few like awesome grooves so we'll just start some of that same tactic in here maybe I'll get a clave something along the line and kind of duplicate this but I'm not gonna use this same concept here I'm gonna go in and just delete everything and replace it with this sound here and maybe now we do a different um, instead of it being 16 it's like eighth notes and it's like the opposite so when we go to pull this up it'll be like really loud here get really quiet in the middle and then loop back out and get really loud um. <laughs> said now what we can do is we could go in and um, what would be really fun is to do like a mix of so you can do cool stuff with um, 
random. So you could add, uh, this just adds random to the project. So on the claves, we could add some random. <laughs> Add a little random to it. I think that'll help make it kind of sound different. And then we could really, what would be cool is to add a beat repeat. I don't know, use any one. Fill in the gaps is a good one. And it doesn't need to have maybe I'll put a compressor on there. synth over the top here. Uh, uh, uh. Maybe we could. Yeah, let's try something like this. This sounds kind of cool. Uh, so we'll call this, oops. That I don't know why this does it with one. I want the stereo. Um, synth, we'll just call this the synth lead. I don't know if it's going to end up being that, but. don't want this to be in any of the lows oops auto pan would be cool but I don't know I was actually trying to put this on uh, do a high pass and then hmm, probably a saturator I'll do another drum rack here and we'll look for CL. There we go. Just a simple, simple hat that we're going to groove on here. Um, and this will drop in this second part here and we'll just be a consistent hat that just does kind of your standard um, groove here. But we could try it with this swing. Let's see. Ooh, that's a little too crazy. Save this. Call this Crystal Cavern, huh? 
how about just how about the crystal or D crystal So we're doing a little arrangement here, a little mixing too. We'll bring this way down. First, yeah, let's, let's properly. Um, uh oh, don't freeze on me. Save. Um, I know they've got some master mixing and mastering. Let's see what's in here. Full chain master. Let's see what this does. Sounds good to me. So we'll export that it's cavern crystal and we'll name it for 4320. Save. And let's open a blender. Let's try to do what we want to do in here. So, I have had the opportunity to attempt this before. So, you do this, you come in here, you use the decimate. You can decimate it so you get kind of a more crystal looking shape. And now, if I go into modeling here, which I don't know why it doesn't. My layout it already looks different, but okay. You can start to grab points, pull them out, and it'll start to make it look really crazy, basically. Really crystal-esque, kind of. might see in a cavern or something sharp crystalline object and let's see how does that look and now in this mode any of that turn on? Maybe I don't want to use that just yet. Yeah. Hmm. So I guess I can just kind of do it on my own um, without really having to even use any other techniques or whatever. Yeah, so you can kind of design it however you want. Um, that looks pretty cool to me. And then 
my only real goal today was to to light it pretty cool kind of how i did that other one just the other day um have it be this dark crystal kind of looking thing so basically i guess for this i want to try to keep it um two different color lights to get kind of a cool effect also i've got to add some kind of material to this which i think that's fine maybe change the base color to something like a little darker it might be cool um, and so now I want to start adding some lights so I get out of modeling mode put on in here shift a add a light I want it to be a point light grab along the X so that's gonna pull it out to there I'm gonna want one here and I'm gonna change the color on this side. So this whole side will have one color, is what I'm thinking, and then this side will have another color. So go into here, um, 120 at least. And the colors, hmm, what are we thinking? Green and yellow, that could look cool. Let's try that. So now, yeah, we're getting kind of green texture there on the one side and uh, I'm gonna want to control C control V grab this along the y-axis and move one forward and then control C control V grab another one along oops, grab the other point light along the Y and bring it towards the back and so now we have three kind of green lights on this side that are lighting it. Oop, undo that. I meant to grab the sphere itself and see see how that's lighting it. But I'm actually gonna want to move it on the am I gonna want to move it on this? The Z, there we go. So that's kind of what I'm going to be going for there in terms of that and basically yeah rotating it along that Z there making it look as epic as possible and so now I basically want to shift a make another point light grab along the X here bring it out to like here Twenty and change the color. I, th I think we said yellow for the other side. And then Control C, Control V, grab along the Y. We'll pull one forward. Control C, Control V, we'll grab along the Y. We'll pull one back there. And so this is what we're starting to get. What I might do too is here. I'll add in wireframe could look cool and then crank that thickness up on it oh, it's like too much and we can have it do something like delete some of the points and then bring them back. We could do something like that. I don't know, what does this one do? I don't think it does anything. Hmm. Anyway, kind of messing around. Um, it's still not exactly lit how I want, so I'm gonna shift, add another light, grab along the Z, bring that up top here. This top one will be, we'll just make it yellow, we'll just decide. And maybe I'll grab Control C and Control V and grab that along the Z again and bring one down there. And then what I might do is just, I think maybe go 200 watts with everybody. I wonder, can I select multiple? I think that did it, right? Oh no, it did not. Hmm. Still learning. 
But yeah, bump all these up so they're a little more powerful. And let's see how this render is starting to look. And we can add some things like bloom and whatnot, which are not added in here just yet. <sighs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, now when I zero in, render that image, it's going to look pretty cool. Maybe have a few of them be even more powerful at like 300 watts. 400 watts. Yeah, maybe the top one, this one at 400. But yeah, just bumping up my lighting here. That's all I'm doing. Because um, it's looking better as it's getting brighter. So. And then when you go in and you render that out, now that's starting to look like some crystal stuff. Uh, and I think if I wanted to get even crazier, I could try to start to, it's just got a regular material in it now. But if I add it in, oops. Um, think something like this and put this in as the base color I don't know that might do some craziness yeah that's got a little bit of a crazy army texture on there um, there's a couple different modes in here too and then when you go to this one, you can see it's starting to look kind of not exactly what I wanted. Very different, but I'm um, trying to add some type of maybe I want to do a noise for that. So let's see what does a noise do for me. If I put that in as the base color. Yeah, that's kind of more of what I was going for. Just like slight change so it doesn't look just so standard. And then, yeah, we can scale that back and see how that looks. Kind of makes it look more natural a little bit. Uh, but I liked it bigger or better when it was larger. So we'll make the scale really small detail really not detailed at all a little bit of distortion now let's see how that looks yeah kind of a subtle touch to it and so I'm trying to think I want to add some unique motion to this but basically I just want to rotate it in cool ways so <laughs> To make it as simple as possible, I'll go back here, I'll take this. I know Z, I definitely want to, oops, no, in place here. Yeah, I want to do it for the whole thing. And go to the end here. And I want this to at least do, let's say four spins. So grab the calculator here. Forty-three twenty. We'll see if that's too fast. Hmm. What does that look like rendered? Is that just because there's no there's no light in the front? Okay, 
think that should solve that. Um, but it looks like it's doing okay with that. The speed is pretty cool. We'll pull our camera out along this Y here so we can get the full image. And it's um, got a weird animation present uh, setting on where it's doing a Bezier. We want linear to keep it just going how it should. Um, default handles auto clamp. I don't even know what that means. Um, but I think this should solve it so it doesn't slow down. It did slow down. Um, like I said, thanks for bearing with me. I'm still learning this program. I think it might be in those settings though. F curvability. Free maybe. Hmm. Well, anyway, I still need to add some more motion to this. So we'll leave that there. And I want these to go even faster. So let's just double that. 84, 8640. 8640. It's replace keyframe. And then this guy will do... Uh, we'll minus 1080 off that. That should be 7560. Might be going too fast now. Okay, but I can scale that back. So minus 10. 6470 and make this one what this one just was which was 7560 I think that might get us closer to where it's not so crazy Probably even scale it back more. What is that? Fifty four forty? Fifty four hundred. Let's try that. That might just be perfect because it's just a little bit more than the other one does. Still kind of too much. Um, let's try really taking it down. This might make it so it's just nice and slow as it spins. Yeah, that's much better. So this is kind of what I was going for. We'll get some some speed. This was sort of inspired. Um, been checking out Dark Crystal, and I wanted to do kind of a crystalline piece. And I I know from the ducky tutorial that I did, um, I knew how to model it. So, so yeah, I'm gonna render that. We'll go into here, and we can go. Oh, it didn't save. And we'll name this one um, Cavern Crystal 1. Accept. And now we'll render that animation. All right. Well, we did it. Another day, another stream. I hope everyone's staying sane out there. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to keep doing these. I'm not going to stop doing these. I'm... Um, 
I'm enjoying doing them and uh, I think it's uh, helping build my skills. So hopefully you want to keep learning with me as I fumble through all these uh, programs and toys and music and video stuff that I'm doing. I think uh, for next week, I want to try to set up the projector and maybe do some projection mapping and show how um, how easy it is to do with a program like Touch Designer or um, probably even Blender. I bet I could do it in there fairly easy because it's got 3D and then you just render out based on that. So hopefully um, we'll, di we'll deep dive into that after this weekend. But for this weekend, we're just going to keep it fun. I'm s hopefully I'll keep... Uh, Switching it up on programs, I might do FL Studio and Touch Designer tomorrow. I think that'll be the game plan. So uh, don't forget to tune in and uh, thanks so much. And you can go to the YouTube, which is right down there, um, and find all these videos on demand. Or uh, don't forget to go to the Instagram where you'll see this project file up tomorrow with the song and the video and everything. So thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you tomorrow.